Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. If you've been here for a while, you'll know that I have completely fallen in love with Smart Dolls, which are these 60 centimeter tall, vinyl, anime inspired, BJD type dolls created by Danny Chu. I have been longing to try painting my own face up on a Smart Doll. However, Smart Dolls are so expensive and so well made that I could possibly bear to remove an existing face up from a smart doll in order to repaint my own. But then over the summer, I ordered some random packs of what are called chaos heads from the Culture Japan website. Unpainted smart doll head sculpts that may have had some minor flaws. I have yet to really notice any flaws on any of the heads I've received, but I'm definitely not complaining about that. I finally have heads to make my very own custom smart doll. In the past, I did an anime style face up on my mini Dolphy Dream. However, this is my first time doing a smart doll face up, so I decided to start with the most common sculpt, that of Mirai Suenaga, the character who started it all. You can see that the Mirai sculpt has very large, round eye holes. Many of the Chaos heads don't have the eyes cut out yet, but luckily this one does, so cutting those out will be an adventure for another day. I've decided to model this face up on that of a newer official smart doll that was just released in the past couple of weeks, Fortitude. I really, really love her eyebrows, her freckles, and her little teeth. Fortitude uses a different base sculpt from Mirai. It's actually the Envisage sculpt with somewhat narrower eyes. But I thought it might be cool to see how this look would translate to a Mirai sculpt. So let's try it. I start just like I do with my Monster High or Ever After High face ups with three separate coats of Mr. Super Clear spray sealant to create a base for the pigments to stick to. When the sealant is completely dry, I use a light brown watercolor pencil to start sketching the outline of where the upper lash line will go. I will try to create the illusion of the eyes having somewhat of a slant to them by creating an uneven lash line, which will be thicker and rounder in the outer corners of the eyes. To see the materials I use, check out the link to my Amazon storefront in the description below. A small percentage of Amazon purchases made through my storefront support the channel. For the line at the bottom of the eyes, I am trying to give it a subtle upturned effect. I think that will help her look extra sweet. You can tell here how slowly and carefully I'm working on getting the lines to look even and symmetrical. This footage is sped up to 300% and it's still pretty slow. I'm adding the eyelid crease lines to create more detail and interest above the eyes. For the eyebrows, this is one of the most important features in this face up, both because Fortitude's eyebrows are probably the feature I like best about her, and because the eyebrows make a big difference in determining the overall expression of the face and its appearance. Creating symmetry and achieving the right placement take a little while because it requires a lot of trial and error and adjustment. You'll see me erasing and redoing the lines quite a bit because I want it to be as close to perfect as possible. You can see here that I'm even using a measuring tape to check the space between the eyes and the eyebrows. I don't think I've ever done that on a doll before. Those first attempts at the eyebrows were too far above the eyes to look natural. This time I am drawing them lower on the face. Believe it or not, it seems that creating symmetry in a doll's face is even harder when you work with a larger canvas. However, having the eye holes placed in a specific spot provides a good reference point for creating the other features around them and spacing things evenly. I fill in the lash line at the top and bottom of the eye holes with my light brown pencil to create a reddish brown underlayer.
The shape creates the slight illusion of a slightly more cat-like eye, with the lash line being thinner in the inner corners of the eye, even though the eye hole remains the same. It takes a while to get the eyebrow shapes looking even and shaped the way that I want, but after a lot of tweaking, I fill in the eyebrows as well. At this point, I spray another layer of Mr. Super Clear to lock in my first layer of color before adding more layers. Then I introduce this terracotta red-brown color for the next layer. I'm pretty much just going over everything I've filled in so far with this color, since I want this to be the prominent base color beneath the darker browns that I will bring in later for the lashes. The terracotta is a really lovely red color. Here I am using it to add more eyelashes. Fortitude's makeup is very similar to Envisage, which I think is why I like it so much. So the lashes kind of have a similar look to those. One of Fortitude's cutest features is her mouth. I'm giving my version a bit more of a smile, but I'm carefully beginning to outline where her open mouth and little teeth will show. I'm using my usual method for soft chalk pastels. I grind them into powder on a scrap of paper and gradually brush them on for blushing, lip color, and eyeshadow. On this type of skin tone, this corally pink is my favorite to use for blush. I spray the face with another layer of MSC and go over the features again with a darker brown pencil. As I've mentioned before in other face-ups, I'm darkening the color overall with the brown, but I'm still allowing the reddish brown tones underneath to peek through, especially at the edges. This looks a lot nicer than it would have if I had gone straight into dark brown or even black before building up this warmer underbase. As I continue to add to my original outlines, the lashes become more and more detailed and delicate. I want the eyebrows to remain reddish, so I don't use the dark brown on those except to add these stylistic eyebrow hairs modeled after the ones on Fortitude. I'm very careful to keep the line of her lips very thin and delicate. I struggled a lot with the mouth on my mini Dolphy Dream, because with anime style dolls, it seems that less is more when it comes to the mouth. 
I have to be very mindful about the thickness, curve, and length of these lines. I fill in the teeth with some white, and her mouth is looking pretty cute. And now for some freckles. I really love the look of freckles on smart dolls, something I became aware of when I saw the incredible face-up work done by Deep Forest Dolls on Instagram. This doll won't be freckled quite to that level of realism, but I do look closely at the amount of and distance between Fortitude's freckles to gauge where I will place them on my girl. Some smart dolls have a very subtle lip color, but I tend to like it when it's a smidge more noticeable. So I'm adding some more reddish pink tones to her lips, and I think it looks extra pretty. I'm using a burnt orange tone for her eyeshadow, balanced out with some orangey pink around her eyelid. This will stand out really nicely later if I give her a sunset colored wig like Fortitude has. I'm using the tiniest bit of white acrylic paint for her teeth. I would usually do this at the end, but I wanted to make sure that it would look right, so I couldn't wait until then. I'll go over it again at the end. I'm still going to use some dark umber for the features. I'm also using a deep red to darken the eyebrows. For the mouth, it seems to look extra cute if I thicken the lines at the very outer corners of the mouth almost like giving the impression of dimples, I guess, but in a very simplified and kawaii anime style. I'm not quite sure how many layers we have at this point, but in this final layer, I'm going to be using just a little bit of black watercolor pencil to really make the features stand out. I am using the black sparingly, however, since it's very important to the overall look of this face that her lashes are prominently red-brown rather than black. And after one final coat of Mr. Super Clear to seal the face, she's complete. Now we need to give her some eyes. I recently bought these Kizuna eyes secondhand, so I figured I'd use these. I bought this blue tack, that isn't blue, from the craft store and I need it before rolling it into a donut shape. I struggle a lot with getting the eyes to stay in the right spot with the blue tack. I pretty much have to do it off camera because it's very awkward and it tends to take me at least a half an hour, unless the doll already has the sticky stuff in the way that Culture Japan does it. So after a bit of struggling, I think she looks really adorable. But wait, I was able to obtain the destiny eyes that Fortitude actually uses. So guess what? I have to do this process all over again. <laughs> that Danny Chu is one of a kind.
but this time around, I learned to use a little less blue tack around each eye. If you use too much, it doesn't stay in place as well, and it sometimes prevents the dome of the eye from sitting flush against the inside of the head, which causes issues. After round two of eye placement frustration, ta-da! I do really like the contrasting effect of the greenish blue color with the reddish tones in her face. She needs a head cap. So I'll be using this bright orange chaos head cap I purchased, which luckily will be hidden underneath her wig. And speaking of her wig, after months of keeping my eye out for the long wavy sunset wig, which I originally wanted for my envisage to wear on occasion, I found someone selling one online. Since it's second hand, it's a lot easier to get onto the doll's head than a brand new wig that hasn't been stretched out yet. Oh wow, she looks so pretty with this hair, doesn't she? Now, although I do hope to build some smart doll bodies out of outlet parts I collected over the past few months, that's going to be a huge undertaking that I haven't gotten around to yet. So for now, this girl will be borrowing my cinnamon prowess's body. For her outfit, she's going to wear this autumn themed outfit I made off camera a few weeks ago, consisting of a black turtleneck and a mustard colored corduroy jumper. I made them to practice sewing, so I didn't film the process, but I used patterns from Requiem Art that I modified a bit to fit exactly the way that I wanted. Side note, I'm in love with this outfit because it reminds me so much of 90s Sabrina the Teenage Witch, as you can see here. The colors of her outfit are reversed, but the vibes are the same. As a child of the 90s and a lifelong huge fan of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the combination just really quote unquote sparks my joy. For her shoes, I have these adorable boots I bought secondhand a while back. Since they are black on the inside, the doll needs some socks for stain prevention. I'm going to use these socks from Too Cute Club, which are very tall, but I'll simply scrunch them down into the shoe so you can't even tell. Last, but certainly not least, I recently received from Cosplay Prop Nerd on Etsy these 3D printed smart doll glasses that I think will look absolutely adorable on this girl, especially with this outfit. This more narrow pair I hope to use on a boy doll sometime. The glasses stay in place by tucking the handles, or arms, of the glasses into the sides of the wig above the ears. So cute.
the end, she does look quite different from Fortitude, who was the inspiration behind her look. But she has all the elements of Fortitude's face-up that I really liked, while also being a bit more smiley. Her mouth actually reminds me of Felicity, who I also like a lot. So I'm really happy with how she turned out. This face-up was really meant to be more of an experiment or a practice run for me to get the feel of doing face-ups on a smart doll. And I'd say it actually turned out better than I expected. I'm super excited to do a lot more smart doll face-ups and even full custom dolls. Maybe next time I'll show you some sewing too. I asked you guys on my Instagram story for a name for a cute doll with red hair that feels sort of autumn-y or nature-y. Um, and I got some great suggestions. It came down to a few that I really liked. A lot of people suggested Aubrey, which I think fits her pretty well. And a lot of people suggested Maple, Ginger, Clove. I like all of those a lot. One of the suggestions that I loved the most was Juniper. And so her name is going to be Juniper. Uh, or Junie for short, which I think is just really, really cute. And she just is pretty adorable to me. So uh, yeah, I think it fits. So thank you so much to those of you who suggested it. I really hope that you enjoyed this. And if you have suggestions for um, types of makeup or a kind of look that you'd like to see on a smart doll, uh, let me know because I'm looking for inspiration right now and I'm very excited. My next video will be a custom doll video kicking off my new series, Destination Disney, featuring dolls inspired by iconic locations and attractions in Disney parks. So I hope you're looking forward to that. And as always, thank you to my patrons whose support helps make all of the doll magic on this channel possible. If you enjoy my videos and would like to help me make more of them, check out Patreon. Becoming a monthly supporter gets you access to bonus and behind the scenes content, participating in exclusive contests and collaborations, early access to my videos, as well as exclusive patron-only videos and tutorials, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash the doll fairy. I'd also like to remind you that the doll fairy now has an official shop with apparel, accessories, charms, stickers, and lots of cool stuff for sale. I designed all of the merch on the doll So head over to check it out and sign up for the email list to find out the inside scoop about upcoming sales and events. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you all again very soon for more doll magic. Bye.